Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, details of the world's first private spacewalk attempt. Now, let's get into it. If you're new here, make sure to hit follow. A new lung cancer vaccine has been tested on a UK patient for the first time. The vaccine BNT116 is designed to treat non-small cell lung cancer, also known as NSCLC, the most common form of the disease. It utilizes mRNA, which is similar to COVID-19 vaccines, and works by presenting the immune system with tumor markers from NSCLC to prime the body to fight cancer cells expressing these markers. Well, we saw the success story with our mRNA COVID vaccine that was just remembered less than four years ago. So we see the transformative effect on COVID vaccine on the world. It saved millions of lives. So in this short period of time, we hope to exploit this RNA technology for a lung cancer patient. That's Professor Xiao Ming Li, consultant medical oncologist at University College London Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust and chief investigator for the trial in the UK. He's also professor of medical oncology at University College London. So a similar concept, targeting antigens on our lung cancer cells, and then we hope to give this vaccine. We know it's well tolerated alongside our standard treatment. So standard treatment nowadays, especially immunotherapy, has improved the prognosis of many of lung cancer patients. So we hope by adding this additional boosting agent, we can help many of lung cancer patients worldwide. The phase one clinical trial is the first in-human study of BNT116, which will be given to lung cancer patients alongside standard immunotherapy. This is an early study, so we're looking at safely issue. We're giving multiple vaccine jabs uh, over a period of one year, unlike the COVID vaccine, and we hope it can be a big game changer for, for lung cancer. 67-year-old Yanis Rax, who lives in London, is the first person to have the vaccine in the UK. He was diagnosed with lung cancer in May and soon after started chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which was given simultaneously. So we're looking at four stages of lung cancer patients, from stage one, two, three, four. And the, the patient, yeah, Yanis Rax, uh, he got stage three lung cancer. He just completed a course of radical chemotherapy and radiotherapy treatment. and. Hopefully, by adding this mRNA vaccine alongside his immunotherapy treatment, we hope we can control the disease longer and try to prevent the, the, the cancer coming, coming back. The trial will take place across 34 research sites in seven countries, with six located in England and Wales. Overall, it's hoped around 130 lung cancer patients will be enrolled, 20 of whom will be based in the UK. Professor Lee says although we're in the very early stages, things look promising so far. This is obviously early trial. We're looking at safety because we're giving multiple jabs of mRNA vaccine and so far so good. And if all goes well, we want to roll it across phase two study, looking at efficacy, and then eventually phase three, where we compare against standard treatment. So it takes many years of work, but by encouraging patients to participate in the trial, we hope we can short circuit the, the study, just like we did with our first mRNA COVID vaccine. So it's, the impact can be enormous for our lung cancer patients. Now, if you're in London Docklands this weekend, you may want to look up because there'll be a 2.5 tonne block of ice suspended from a crane. But don't worry, this is all part of a performance called Thor by Australian physical theatre company Legs on the Wall to highlight the impact of climate change. Thor is an outdoor, durational, spectacle, aerial installation artwork hung at 20 metres with a performer on top of the ice as it melts away over a eight hour period. You're sort of out in the elements, you're probably dealing with hot sun, but you've got, you know, you're wearing a full wetsuit to manage the cold as well. And if you hit the ice, it's like hitting rock. So it, it's big. We caught up with artistic director and show creator Joshua Thompson to find out more. The choreography is is sometimes massive and they're running and jumping and, and leaping from the ice at, at 20 plus metres in the air. And sometimes they're running around the side of the ice form. There's some aerial acrobatics. But then there's some really beautiful moments of just sitting and being. Don't worry, Joshua reassures us that all performers taking part will be safely harnessed. He says the inspiration comes from Australian bushfires he witnessed in 2019. We were waking up to red, sunny, like this, it was summer, but the sky was red. 
I remember being just outside where I'm doing this here, this recording, and sitting there with my dog and ash and burnt leaves were falling on my property like snow and the fires, you know, and my, the closest fire to me was around 80 to 90 kilometers away. And yet there was a doomsday feeling about it. The show first performed at Sydney's Opera House, but why are they bringing the show to London? I, I understand this hypocrisy in exactly what I'm doing. Like the show takes energy. To tour it to London takes, it does have a, have a cost on the planet. And I understand and I acknowledge that, but I always, believe that the idea is worth that cost and the idea of planning it in local Londoners or tourists in London you could never really measure what that idea like inception right like it, it grows in people it, it could mean something to a young boy or a young girl that they grow up and they do something amazing with that in mind the performance is on at Greenwich and Docklands International Festival SpaceX has announced the launch date for a groundbreaking mission that will attempt the world's first private spacewalk and take the crew further from Earth than any human has travelled since the Apollo program more than 50 years ago. The Polaris Dawn mission is currently set to launch during a four-hour window on the 27th of August, a day later than originally scheduled. It will be the second flight for US billionaire Jared Isaacman, who is personally financing the mission and will lead a four-person crew aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule Resilience on the five-day venture. The spacewalk is scheduled to take place on the third day of the mission, which will see Isaacman and fellow crew member Sarah Gillis exit the craft while attached to an umbilical cord. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, a new dinosaur is discovered with power eyebrows. Welcome back. A volcano in southwestern Iceland has erupted for the sixth time since December. The eruption began last night at 9.26pm local time on the Reykjanes Peninsula, near the abandoned town of Grindavik, following a series of earthquakes according to the Icelandic Meteorological Office. The total length of the fissure was about 3.9 kilometres and extended by 1.5 kilometres in about 40 minutes. Residents of capital city Reykjavik posted on social media that they could see the plumes of lava rising from about 50 kilometres away. The eruption showed the challenge faced by the island nation of nearly 400,000 people, as scientists warned that the Reykjanes Peninsula could face repeated outbreaks for decades or even centuries. And finally. A new terrifying species of dinosaur has been discovered by scientists, and it turns out it had distinctive eyebrows that could even rival those of supermodel Cara Delevingne. New analysis revealed the, now bear with me here, Alpcaracush kirgizicus is a new species but belongs to the theropod dinosaur group, making it a distant cousin of the T-Rex. The first remains of the fossil were discovered in 2006, and over the course of several excavations, paleontologists unearthed skull bones, pelvic vertebrae, fragments of the shoulder, forelimbs and hind limbs of the dinosaur, which would have measured up to 9 metres long. The new findings are published in the Zoological Journal of the Linnean Society. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Standard Podcast for all the latest news and analysis. Tech and Science Daily will be back on Tuesday at 1pm. Enjoy the bank holiday!